Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're happy that you're back as you continue on your journey towards CNE success. If this is your first time tuning in, we're happy that you're here and make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already to make sure you're alerted every single time there is a new episode, which happens just about every single week. For those of you returning, we're happy that you're back as we continue on the journey to support your success. This is all about making sure that you have a solid seven-week study plan to ensure you're closing your knowledge gaps and spending the dedicated time that you need to every single week focusing on all of the NLN competencies. Now, there are three primary resources that you will need to close your knowledge gaps. You can go ahead and take a look at the description. That's going to give you all the information you need about these resources. And we do focus on content from all three nurse educator exams. Okay, so that includes the academic, the clinical, as well as the novice exam. If you are not familiar with Dr. Sellers Educate, let me just tell you a little bit about us. Our mission is simple. That is to support every single nurse educator to achieve certification by NLN as a nurse educator. All right, so we are here with you. No matter how long it takes, we know that everybody's journey looks a little different. Um, and we wanna make sure that when you're ready to have that focused time and dedicate to achieving success, we wanna be here to support you every single step of the way. If you have not taken a look at our website, go ahead and head over there, drsellerseducate.com. That's where you're going to find a list of programs and services to help you close your knowledge gap so that you can be successful when you sit down to take the NLN c and &E exam. All right, so for the next several episodes, we're going to be focusing on the educational learning theory. You will be using as your primary text, Billings and Halstead Teaching and Nursing. That is the sixth edition focusing specifically on chapter 14. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our content together. Learning theory seeks to explore the relationships between the concepts that are described in each of the learning theorist work and the actual learning process that takes place in our classroom. In order to ensure that we are closing all of our knowledge gaps for the competency one, if it's the CNE and also for the CNE clinical, all of the concepts related to learning theory, how we engage with our learner to ensure that they are indeed competent and have met those learning objectives at the end of the course, at the end of the clinical experience or at the end of the skills lab experience. We want to focus specifically for this episode on social learning theory. So let's go ahead and take a look at the practice question. The novice nurse educator is working on establishing their philosophy of education and has determined that it is most aligned with social learning theory. Which teaching strategy is an example of the integration of this learning theory? All right, so you see the four options here. Throughout our conversation today in this snapshot, we're going to be talking about what are those key elements when we talk about social learning theory that you want to be knowledgeable about? There are several learning theories that we will explore over the next several weeks. And there are three different elements that you wanna consider as we talk about each of these learning theories. First is learning. How is learning defined? What concepts are mapped back to that specific learning theorist work? The different categories of learning theory really is a more generic, more broad overview, okay? So that's what we're gonna take a look at as it relates to social learning theory. If you flip over to table 14.1 in Billings and Halstead, that's where you're gonna see an excellent breakdown of all of these nursing theories that we're gonna talk about. Here at Dr. Sellers Educate, we use and recommend the NLN resources that are described in the candidate handbook, okay? So we follow and we map back to content in these resources to make sure that you are following the appropriate framework and content to ensure that you are closing your knowledge gaps, All right? So remember when we look at our success framework, we are focusing on three different areas. That foundation is gonna be established with at least three plus years of nurse educator experience. Now, if you have less than that, it doesn't mean you can't be successful. It just means that we will have to spend more time focusing on content to ensure you're closing your knowledge gaps. The next component of our pyramid related to our concepts for success is resources. Okay, so you've got to make sure that you have those right resources 
as those are described in the description area right here on our YouTube channel. Or if you're listening to our podcast, you can see those resources listed there as well. And then that third element is going to be support, making sure that you have the right support to ensure that you are doing the work, the specific focus work that you need to, so that you can be successful when you show up for the exam. All right, so back to our content. Learning is the first category you want to think about. And this specific learning theory states that the concept really is centered around passive interactions with others. And then secondly, being intentional about how we observe behaviors of others. Okay, and then the second category is teaching methods. Some examples are going to be peer-to-peer -peer learning, as well as observation of those best practices. Thinking about the experiences that our nursing students have in the clinical setting is a great way to think about and to remember the social learning theory. Now, Bandura is one of the well-known social learning theorists that you will be able to read about in Billings and Halstead. Um, and part of their work focuses on the importance of observation, both formal and informal. And then last, the third category, when we, you think about studying content for the CNE exams is related to evaluation methods. So how do we evaluate or how do we align our evaluation methods back to the specific theories that we're talking about over the next several weeks? So for social learning theory, those specific evaluation methods may include reflecting on observations and group activities. This is gonna create this social learning experience and an overall positive learning experience for our students, right? That's our responsibility in the classroom, in the clinical setting, in the skills lab or sim lab, is to ensure we are creating an inclusive learning experience for our students and we are promoting the social learning theory. All right, so as we wrap up, let's take a look back at our practice test question. Hopefully you've had some time to think about it um, and have made a choice as, as you have the four options here. A is adding a concept map assignment. B is creating a voiceover presentation lecture. C is role modeling effective teaching practices or C, assign individual practice time and skills lab. And if you chose C, role model effective teaching practices, you are correct. When you look at table 4.1 and in chapter one of Dr. Caputi, you're going to see a great description and really reinforcement of the value of us role model, role modeling these effective teaching practices, also role modeling in the clinical setting, our ability to collaborate, to integrate, to promote interdisciplinary collaboration with our nursing colleagues. All right. So role modeling is strongly connected to the social learning theory. All right, so this has been our snapshot for our time together in this episode. Feel free to head over to our website to see all of the programs that we have to offer, as well as you can reach out to us via email if you have other questions about this episode. Until next time, we appreciate you tuning in and we will see you next week. Have a great one, everybody.